Hey guys, I'm Saurav. Welcome to the channel. Today in this video, I'm going to talk about a highly requested topic, hyperlapses. What is a hyperlapse? A hyperlapse is basically a moving time lapse. Simple, right? Well, it sounds simple. It even looks great. But there are certain steps to keep in mind in the shooting and editing process if you need good results. If you're someone who is a complete beginner and you haven't shot any hyperlapses before, or you have tried shooting it, but you didn't quite get the desired result, don't worry, you have come to the right place. This video is going to cover the shooting part and the editing part in depth. I'm super excited. So without wasting any time, let's get started. There are two ways you can go about creating hyperlapses. One is shooting a long video and speeding it up in post and two taking individual images. The editing process is a bit different depending on what technique you choose. On the screen right now, you will be seeing the timestamps for the shooting and the editing process. You can jump to a particular timestamp and follow along. Let's first talk about the video recording process. Doesn't matter if you're shooting photos or videos, always use manual focus. You don't want your focus to change while shooting the hyperlapse. That will look weird and it is impossible to fix in post. When you're shooting videos, a must have equipment is a gimbal. Make sure that the gimbal is in lock mode. The reason for this is when you're walking in a straight line, you don't want the camera to pan left or right. That will be difficult to fix in post. You want the camera to be locked in a particular direction. The idea is to capture the video in camera as stable as possible. Make sure you have your grids on. It helps with the composition. I'm shooting in manual mode and using a fixed white balance so that the colors don't change. Talking about the length of the video, try to shoot at least a minute of footage. Longer the video, you will have more flexibility to speed it up in post. This is a simple technique, but the downside is you're limited to how long can you shoot the hyperlapse for. Just by holding the gimbal and the camera for a minute or two will make you tired. If you want to capture longer hyperlapses, I would definitely recommend taking individual photos. When taking individual photos, you don't need a gimbal, just the camera is fine. Turn on your grids, leveling, and I prefer using single autofocus point. Even if I'm using manual focus, I can use the autofocus square as the reference. Now, when I'm walking, I have a reference point and I will align it with the autofocus square for every individual image. Again, the goal is to capture a series of images where the reference point is exactly at one place. But that is practically impossible. The better job you do in camera, easier it will be for you in post processing. Using a tripod is optional. Sometimes it might not be possible to use the tripod depending on where you're shooting. But if you have a tripod and it's possible to use a tripod, I would recommend using it. You don't have to hold the camera for longer time. You will be less tired. And if you want to play with slower shutter speed, tripod is the obvious option. I shoot all my images in RAW and taking individual images is a cumbersome task and it takes a lot of memory as well. But the positive side is I get extremely high quality footage in terms of sharpness, colors and dynamic range. You also get the flexibility to play with shutter speeds and you can shoot for longer duration. This hyperlapse took me more than an hour, which is impossible if I was recording a video. Now that you have your files, it's time to edit them. Before that, shout out to the sponsors of the video who made this video possible, Track Club. All the music that I use in my videos are from Track Club. When I'm editing a sequence with hyperlapses and fast cuts, I'm looking for something with high energy. I can use these filters depending on the kind of music I'm looking for. Let's say I'm looking for something energetic and cinematic. I can even choose the genre and you will have music tracks filtered out within seconds. If I like a music track, I can click here and explore similar options as well. Now this is the cake. The cherry on the cake is you can customize the music tracks too using Mixlab. For instance, if I like this music track, but only want the music and not the vocals, I can just mute them. I can also play with different instruments used in the music track. Once I'm happy with the mix, I can download it just with a single click. It is that easy. If you're a filmmaker or a content creator and you're looking for a place with high quality music tracks, you should definitely check out Track Club. Depending on whether you are an individual content creator or you run a business, there are different plans that cover your needs. 
You can download as many music tracks as you like and you won't have to worry about copyright strikes. Check out Track Club, link in the description. As I said at the start of the video, the editing process is different depending on whether you're shooting a video or taking individual images. Let's first see the editing process if you have shot a video. The software I'm going to use is After Effects. Now, if you don't have any experience with After Effects, don't worry. Initially, it might seem a bit overwhelming. Even I am a beginner when it comes to After Effects. But if you follow along, it will be easier. So I won't recommend to watch this video and then edit the hyperlapse. What I would recommend is watch it side by side and edit it simultaneously. That way it will be easier. The first step is to import the video. Go to file, import footage, file. Once you have imported the video, just drag it here and create a new composition. I will just trim the video and set the start and end of the video. Next step is to increase the speed of the video. Right click, time, time stretch. You can change the stretch factor. Reducing it will increase the speed of the video or you can also set the duration of the video manually. Here, I want it to be a one second video. Click on OK. Let me zoom in a bit. Go to the last frame, press N on your keyboard, right click, trim comp to work area. So now we have a one second video. This is not definitely stable, but don't worry about it. We are going to fix it. Next step is to right click and pre-compose. Click move all attributes into the new composition and make sure this is checked. This will create a new fresh composition which won't have any speed keyframes. The speed adjustments will still be there, but you have a cleaner composition without any keyframes. For stabilization, we are going to use a tracker. If you don't see this, click on Window Tracker. Go to Stabilize Motion. Make sure you have only selected Position and not the Rotation and Scale. Click on Options, Luminance, Enhance before Match. This will enhance the frames so that it's easier to track. Subpixel Positioning and the most important option, change this to Stop Tracking. When to stop tracking? when the confidence is below 90%. If you don't understand what's going on, don't worry, it will all make sense later. Click on OK. We are going to use this tracker and track a particular part of the video. Make sure to select a part with good contrast. A corner would be a great option. I will go to the middle of the video and adjust my tracker position. Now, click on Analyze Forward. After Effects will try to analyze every frame and move the tracker automatically. But it will stop only when the confidence level is below 90%. Once it stops, manually move the tracker and again click on Analyze Forward. Once I finish the second half of the video, just press U on your keyboard and you will see all the keyframes. I'll go back to my initial frame and now analyze backward. It will do the exact same thing. If it's not sure enough, it will stop. You will have to adjust the tracker manually and again analyze backward. Once you have reached the start of the video, you are almost done. These are all the keyframes. Just click on apply. Select X and Y, boom, you're done. Now you have a perfectly stabilized video. You might see some empty spaces in the video due to the stabilization. Just scale the video a bit and adjust the position and make sure you don't have any blank spaces throughout the whole video. Once you're happy with how it looks, it's time to export it. Go to File, Export, Add to Render Queue. Choose Custom Settings, Quick Time, Format. If you're using Windows, choose DNX HR. If you're using Mac, you can choose Apple ProRes 422HQ. Audio output off, choose the destination folder and click on render. Now let's see how to edit a hyperlapse if you have shot individual images. The first step that I do is edit the raw files in Lightroom. I'm not going to cover this part in detail. I have separate videos explaining how to use Lightroom. Links will be in the description. Once I'm happy with the overall edit, I will sync the edits across all the images so that they look uniform. 
I could have cropped the images to 16 by 9 aspect ratio, but the extra information can be useful later. Once the edits are synced, just export them to JPEGs. Once you have the JPEG files, open After Effects, Import, File, select the first JPEG file. It will automatically detect that it's a JPEG. Click on Imported JPEG Sequence, Force Alphabetical Order, and click on OK. It has generated a 30 FPS footage. We want it to be 24 FPS. Right click, interpret footage, main, change it to 24 FPS. We will change this from 8 bit to 16 bit since all the images are in raw format. Drag this and create a new composition just like before. Now if you see, this is already speeded up. 24 frames are being played in one second, one after the other. So if you have captured 240 frames, you will have a 10 second footage. This is nowhere close to the final result. The editing process is similar to what we have done before, but involves an extra step, which I will talk about later. For now, we are going to do the exact same thing as before. Stabilize motion. Make sure only position is selected. Go to options, RGB for the video we used luminance, Enhance before match, subpixel positioning turned on, and finally, stop tracking whenever After Effects is less confident so that we can manually adjust the position of the tracker. You can set this to 80 to 90%. If it's less confident than that, it will stop. Go to the original composition and just change the resolution to full and come back to your JPEG layer. I will select a corner with good contrast and adjust the position of this tracker. Make sure the size is not too small or not too big. If it's too big, your performance will get affected. Once I'm happy with the tracker, I will click on Analyze Forward. And what this will do is move forward frame by frame and try to track it. Once it's not sure, it will stop and you will have to move the tracker manually and again click on Analyze Forward. Depending on how the images are and the position of the tracker, you might have to do this several times. Once you're done with the second half of the video, press U to see the keyframes. Go to the initial frame and start tracking backwards. This will do the exact same thing but will move backward and cover the first half of the video. Once you're done with the complete video, click on Apply. Select X and Y and the first half of the edit is done. If you see, this particular reference point is exactly at the same place throughout the whole video. But it still has a lot of rotational shake. We did not face this issue in the video editing technique because we were using a gimbal to film the video and there was no rotational shake to fix. Before we stabilize it further, let's have a clean composition. Right click here and pre-compose. Move all attributes into the new composition and make sure this is checked too. Again, stabilize motion. This time, make sure only rotation is checked and the position is not. Now, you will see two trackers instead of one. We are going to move these trackers in a way where this line is either vertical or horizontal. Try to find a straight line in your frame, preferably closer to the point that we used while stabilizing the position and align these trackers such that it overlaps that line. In terms of the position of these two trackers, a corner would again be a better option or any area with high contrast will do. Before we start tracking, go to Composition, press Y on your keyboard and move the anchor point to the point that we have used before for position tracking. This is an important step. Go back to your layer, somewhere at the middle of the video, click on Analyze Forward. After Effects will again try its best to track this line, but when it's not sure, it will stop. You will have to manually adjust these two trackers and again, analyze forward. Press U, go to the initial frame and track backwards. Repeat the same process. Once you're done with the complete video, just click on apply. To learn how to export the video, jump to this time frame and follow the exact same steps. It might take a bit of time to get used to the overall workflow. But with practice, you will improve over time. Yes, there are a lot of efforts involved, but the end result is definitely worth it. 
that's it from this video guys thank you for watching thank you track club for sponsoring the video and supporting the channel if you guys like the video press the like button share the video with your filmmaker friends and if you create a hyperlapse tag me in your videos i would love to see what you people have created i'll talk to you guys in the next one bye